Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have to look at the latest from the live radar, run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we have got fairly unsettled conditions arriving for all over the coming hours as we do see the westerly winds slowly returning after we've had a brief hiatus the last few days with that transient ridge of higher pressure. Now it is going to start a fairly unsettled trend as we head into the next working week where it could culminate in the arrival of the remnants of Hurricane Kirk which right now is a major hurricane out in the Atlantic. It's going to be picked up by the jet stream and it's going to be thrown towards northern Europe but we still have massive uncertainty on its exact track. A few hundred miles will make the difference between tropical storm winds across northern France or tropical storm winds across southern Europe. England. We've got a few runs that are kind of against each other. ECWF wants it more of a southerly track through France. GFS wants it more of a northerly track. And we'll look at all of those various operational runs. Also looking at the ensemble tracks and we'll also have a look at the NHC, the National Hurricane Centre, um, which again has its forecast cone for the rest of this system. So do remember if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if you start on the live radar, you can see some, some there is some exceptionally heavy rain out to our west hitting parts of the Republic of Ireland and slowly heading into southwest England at the moment. But I must stress this does look like it is going to weaken significantly as it progresses eastwards over the course of the evening. The latest UKV, which we'll look at in a minute, does have it losing its intensity really quickly. So don't worry, this does look pretty daunting, these oranges and yellows. But hopefully it should subside pretty quickly as it heads northwards and eastwards. For areas to the east of this system, it's actually a pretty mild and dry day as we still have high pressure just hanging on and we are reintroducing milder air from the west um, with this Atlantic system. So actually, it's not too bad. Pretty optimum day for early October. Now, do go over to the latest UKV now and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. You can see that heavy rain heading in from the southwest at the moment, but as it progresses northwards and eastwards over the coming hours, you can see it really uh, peters away into just areas of lighter to moderate pulses and just a bit of cloud into Sunday morning. We could see some more heavier rain into Sunday for parts of the Republic of Ireland, Wales and southwest England. Again, that could linger into the early afternoon. And again, it could progress eastwards, maybe a few thundery pulses within that. Again, that will be one. We've just got to keep an eye on the live radar tomorrow. That will slowly clear away through Sunday evening into Scotland. And then as we head into Monday, it's an unsettled day with showers and strong westerly flow. And then could culminate in some heavy rain overnight Monday into Tuesday, spreading up from the south. You see the next few days, not going to be washed out conditions, but definitely more unsettled than it has been recently. Some areas of persistent rain, just but mostly just plenty of hefty showers. Now as we transition through Tuesday, lots of heavy thundery showers coming in from the west. And as we move into Wednesday, this is when we should see the remnants of Kirk arriving. However, the UKV, very similar to the ECMWF, has it much further south. So if you just look on the far bottom right of the screen, that more thicker cloud and heavier rain, that is where Kirk's weather fronts are going. Still seeing stronger winds around, but UKV not entertaining Kirk at all today. Now, just looking at this in isolation, I'd be saying, what's the hype then? Kirk looks like it's going to miss us uh, to a few hundred miles to our south. Why are we even talking about it? But this is the further south run I've seen, uh, the GFS, which we'll look at in a minute, has it moving through uh, central England, giving 70, 80 mile per hour winds there and very heavy rain. So that's why if you looked at this run in isolation, you'd say, oh, nothing's going to happen at all. But when you add on the GFS, you'd argue, well, that could be a, a sort of a historic system from what the GFS is showing, where uh, the UKV is nothing at all. And that's why it is so frustrating at this time frame. We've got different runs uh, not agreeing at all. If the GFS was subtly shifted, um, perhaps through the channel, then I'd say maybe the UKV is onto something, shifting it slightly further southwards. But considering the disparity between the two runs, I think just simply means that the uncertainty is there um, and it probably won't let up for another couple of days. Hopefully Sunday, Monday, we should have more of a concrete answer. I hoped by today we'd have a more concrete answer, but it looks like this morning runs have almost put that spread further apart. 
Now, if you look at the temperatures, though, over the coming days, you can see today, temperatures 16, 17 degrees. So, you know what? Actually, not too bad for early October. Actually, pretty mild. And the same could be said for Sunday, apart from where we see a bit more cloud and rain, where it'll only be 12 or 13 into monday temperatures again fairly mild 16 to 18 across england and wales and northern ireland cooler further northwards but still pretty decent for early october and the same for tuesday and as we head into wednesday cooling down a little bit from the north and the west as that uh, as we are likely to see some cold air coming from behind uh, the remnants of kirk uh, but at this stage we're still a little bit too far away to see that fully pushing in but yeah very interesting ukv run really not entertaining the arrival of Kirk at all not showing much at all in terms of precipitation and even the winds aren't particularly strong so uh, yeah really at odds with some of the other runs uh, again it will be very interesting to see the next couple of days whether the runs that have been showing it piling through southern England are completely wrong uh, and these runs that have got it well to our south are right regardless though there are going to be some severe impacts it just is whether it's in France or whether it's in England now, if you go over to have a look at some of the track, uh, the forecasted tracks of Kirk, you can see at the moment it is out in the central Atlantic, not near any land for the next three or four days. And you can see it's a major hurricane till about Sunday afternoon. As I head through Sunday into Monday, it transitions back into a category one or two hurricane and then slowly into a post tropical storm. So this, by that point, it loses its tropical characteristics as it heads into the North Atlantic by around Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it slowly heads towards Northern Europe. And you can see here, this is the long-term long -term forecast um, cone, and you can see the northern end of the cone is through England, the southern end of the cone is through Northern France, heading into Northern Europe. So you can see here, the GFS is on the northern end of this, the UKV is on the southern end of this, uh, and that's why we can't really say with too much detail what is going to be happening, because uh, we can see roughly where the system's going to move through, but it again, it all depends on its exact track, literally 50 to 100 miles could make all the difference between how severe impacts could be. But the one interesting thing is it remains a post tropical storm uh, which means it's not got tropical characteristics but it's still got tropical storm winds uh, which does mean again impacts could be uh, quite severe because that's something one thing we've not really looked at much when looking at this system is the impacts and it's because we've been too far away and the track keeps moving so uh, i don't want to start saying in videos we're going to see 80 mile per hour wind gusts if the track just shifts uh, you know 500 miles further south for the next day and we have some movements like that now again this is based off raw model data and if we actually have a look at some of that raw model data we have two runs here the ecmwf and the gfs just want to refresh it to try and get as up-to-date data as possible you can see the ecmwf which is pretty subtly tracked you can see it is just heading sort of thing mean of all the ensembles is just to the north of spain so that would indicate it's heading into northern france or the channel ecmwf has definitely been more subtly tracked but it only is going out to the next sort of three four five days so we don't quite get to its full arrival next wednesday thursday time we can still see it is fairly strong there as it heads into the bay of biscay now the gfs has a very similar track out to day five just to the north of spain and portugal maybe slightly further northwards but very similar track but it then changes course and heads slightly further northwards instead of straight eastwards. And it basically passes straight through the Channel Islands, through the Channel, and heads towards Kent. Now, that would have some pretty severe impacts. And you can see the strength is still in the yellows here, some oranges as well, which indicates uh, winds around 60, maybe 70 knots, which is 80, maybe 90 miles per hour. So again, could be some pretty severe impacts from this so you can see why we've got that wide forecast cone and some of those southerly runs like the ukv will be non-impact non-events at all for england whereas some of these runs that are heading straight through england could be pretty severe indeed and remember these are tracking the center of the system that doesn't mean, uh, of course, the main impacts won't be around the centre. They'll be around uh, sort of the edges of the system. And again, it depends on the orientation, how the weather front's set up. Uh, and that's something that we'll have to, again, look at in more detail over the next few days. But again, you see these tracks uh, and yeah, it is very tight, 
very uh, tight margins about where it impacts. Now, if you look at the latest GFS, uh, which, as I've said, is pretty southerly tracked, uh, sorry, northerly tracked, sorry, with its uh, remnants of Kirk, you can see it's unsettled over the coming days. Eventually, Kirk arrives. Again, it just clears northern Spain, and then it heads straight into the channel, and here it crosses pretty much the far southeast of Kent. And if we do zoom in, you can see here down towards some 964 millibars, basically through the Dover Strait there, and you can see on this back edge and southern edge is where the strongest winds will be you can see that here really exceptionally strong down its western and southern flanks uh, wind gusts would be looking well in excess of 100 to 120 kilometers per hour and you could also see if we put on the precipitation very heavy rain associated with it as well especially on its northern and western flanks so yeah gfs showing a pretty severe system weather uh, but when we have a look at the east of the ref in a minute, it clears it well to our south. It's absolute headaches with this at the moment. As it clears, though, all runs to agree once it eventually clears, northerly winds will arrive and we'll see some colder air into the end of the week. And then eventually we do see westerly winds continuing to push in but it's more transient between high pressure low pressure so it is going to be uh, quite on and off up and down when it comes to uh, that exact pattern but you see right towards 384 hours actually high pressure actually does build in and you can see it's not too bad there for the end point of october but again we've got a lot to get through before we get to that point if we do look at the latest gm again low pressure pushing in at the moment remnants of kirk just clearing northern spain and look at that it's not a particularly severe system and it heads pretty much through central france if we do zoom in that's the remnants of kirk there 984 millibars about 20 millibars weaker than um than the gfs with higher pressure if we look at the winds nothing crazy strong down in the bay of biscay some strong winds but as soon as it moves inland those winds die out completely um very interesting indeed and precipitation yes some very heavy rain for northern france but it does clear pretty quickly as well um so yeah really really intriguing to see the huge disparity between these runs at only sort of day five time frame the uk here would just be a bit wet with showers and actually would be even colder with a stronger northerly wind pushing in after that and eventually towards day 10 we continue oscillating between colder and milder sectors so gm like the east mwf is well two hours south and again if we do finally check up on that ecmwf and we keep talking about you can see again low pressure continuing to dominate over the coming days eventually the remnants of kirk arrive and again head through northern france a little bit more of a severe system then perhaps hitting more parts of england but definitely nowhere near as strong and nowhere near as far northwards as the gfs and instead is just a strong low pressure system but nothing to write home about and you can see if we look at the precipitation the majority of the rain actually is through france and if we have a look at the winds as well again the majority of those winds are through northern france as well so yeah intriguing the disparity we're seeing at the moment and then just to finish the run again oscillating between high pressure low pressure colder and warmer sectors now the one big thing that i will say is that the ensembles are still pretty on with producing this low uh, the remnants of Kirk right over the top of us. And we can see that from the ensemble chart here. Massive precipitation spike in the middle of next week. Again, that would give all indications of a direct strike from those big weather fronts, which we just saw from the GEM and the Eastern DF go through France. So the majority of GFS ensembles have us seeing those weather fronts at least. You can see the big dip after that with the colder temperatures. And if we look at the 10 meter winds as well, a big uptick there towards 10 to 14 meters per second. Again, pretty strong indications of a quite severe low. And another big factor is if we look at the ECMWF ensembles, which again have a big spike appearing into the middle of next week. Maybe not as big as the GFS, but still big nonetheless. And the rest of the ensemble chart follows on very similar to the GFS. Um, so it looks like both the ECMWF and GFS ensembles are fairly on board with a pretty large strike by Kirk. 
uptick in winds, maybe not as much of an uptick, but definitely an uptick. And the big thing is the sea level pressure does dip there. Not as much as the GFS. If we go back to the GFS, we can see that there is a bit more of an, a, a little dip there, down to sort of 970 millibars or even lower. But again, all indications are that that system is going to be heading our way at a fairly strong rate. The ECLWF and the GM, GM operational runs are definitely on that southerly track and on the higher pressure end for this system. Again, these are the headaches we get when we are forecasting these post-tropical systems. Uh, again, how they interact with the jet stream it is exceptionally difficult to sort of forecast and for the models to sort of take account of. So again, all I can say is definitely looks like there'll be some impacts. How severe, exact timings, again, we'll have to continue to wait. I do feel like a bit of a broken record at the moment because every video I basically, you know, continue saying you know, the latest update on the system and then always have to say, it could change because we're continuing to see the models going up and down with their intensities, up and down in their tracks. Um, and it is pretty frustrating, um, but I can't imagine what it actually feels like to be one of the sort of Met Office forecasters who's probably going to have to put warnings in for this system if this does go in that more northerly track because we keep seeing these runs going up and down. Uh, and yeah, we'll have to just wait and see what happens next week. As I said, hopefully the short range runs will get their head around it in the next day or two and give us a concrete answer on this system. But at the moment, all we can say is it's heading towards Northern Europe. It does look like from majority of ensembles and operational runs, it is going to be a fairly lively system. Even the NHC still forecasting tropical storm winds. It's just where will it hit? So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay tuned for the videos over the coming days as hopefully we'll have a better concrete answer. But I'll see you again for another video soon.